Christ um, or their need for a Savior. Uh, praying for a person without sharing anything or inviting a non-believer uh, to Christ or your group. All of these things can help promote a person to come to Christ, but in and of itself is not um, evangelism. Um, and it's kind of who actually you quoted John Stott because uh, from what he talked about of what evangelism is, is uh, to evangelize is to spread the good news of Jesus Christ died for our sins and was raised from the dead according to the scriptures. And that as the reigning Lord, he now offers the forgiveness of sins and the liberating gift of the Spirit to all who repent and believe. That's the biblical basis, according to John Stott, of evangelism. And this is important because if we look into scripture um, about the gospel, um, we can see that there is, in some sense, there is needs to be some type of communication of what the gospel is so that they can come to Christ. Um, Romans 10.14 says, How then can they call on the one who have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? So any, commun any type of communication of what the gospel is are letting them know, like, how to Christ? What is the gospel? What is the good news? And um, and they'll know um, what the gospel is, and they will have they'll make their decision on whether they would want to come to Christ or not. Um, so before I go on into something else that um, I will be talking about, I'm going to show you a little clip of someone else who. Actually, think uh, what does a true Christian act like? I think that if you're a true Christian, you don't consider Christianity just a part of your life, it is your life. And if you follow the teachings of the Bible, specifically uh, Mark 16 15, which says, Go out into the world and preach the good news to all creation, then uh, you have an obligation to share that faith with others. If you saw a building on fire and you knew there were people in it, and you knew that you were capable of running in there and saving someone who wouldn't be able to help themselves, if you knew that you could help them, would you just stand there and do nothing? And unfortunately, by not clearly seeing the issue, I think that's what a lot of Christians do, is they just stand there. I think, by and large, most of it is that most Christians are not really well educated as to their own religion's position on various issues. They consider worshiping Jesus to be part of their lives, but not their primary purpose. And I believe that true Christianity considers it to be the primary purpose. And if you're a true Christian, you believe that those who are not Christians, those who have not followed the teachings of the Bible, uh, that have not accepted Jesus Christ as their personal savior, those people aren't going to heaven. They're going to hell. Hell's not a fun place. I have heard Christians, definitely, uh, that have the view that everyone is entitled to their own belief. And that's not nece necessarily a bad position to have, but if you believe that what they believe is going to earn them a place in eternal suffering, then there's a problem with that, in that you're allowing them to be tortured for eternity, while at the same time believing that you shouldn't save them from that. It's, it's very awkward. If you really believe that uh, people who are not Christians are going to hell, then that is a, a very serious consequence. And if you don't take that seriously, I think that you might be compromising your own belief system. Those who do take their faith seriously, they need to encourage or teach those who might not how important that is. Sometimes I think Christians are afraid of being labeled as a Bible thumper or uh, to have uh, negative connotations associated with them. But that's not necessarily negative if you're a Christian. I think it's something to be proud of. There's nothing to be ashamed of if you're a Christian about the Bible or being a Bible thumper. It's something to be proud of. It's something that you take seriously.
and it's something that you should encourage others to take seriously as well. And it might require you to challenge yourself to, you know, stand up in front of crowds, to talk to people that you don't know. Missionaries work in places uh, where the predominant religion is not Christianity. And that's a completely different scenario uh, than, you know, in most parts of the United States. But they, they take it in stride, they accept it, and they move on. You shouldn't take rejection personally, but consider it uh, that you gave them a fighting chance. Give them a fighting chance at heaven. Uh, even, if, even if you do have to uh, risk offending someone or risk a friendship, uh, it's a simple matter of weighing priorities. If I were a Christian, of course I would take the Bible seriously. I respect people who take their beliefs seriously. And I would take the Bible's teachings seriously. Among those teachings is the idea that there is a heaven and there is a hell. And those that accept Jesus Christ as their personal savior go to heaven. Those that don't go to hell. And the implications of that are very far reaching. And you're an atheist? Yes, I sure am. But seriously, when I watched this video, when I watched this for the first time, I actually thought this guy was a Christian. Yeah. Um, who actually thought that this guy was a Christian before like, watching this video? Yeah, this guy, even though he said that he was an atheist, um, he just went on and talked about like um, what it means to be a Christian. And um, one thing I have to tell you is that when atheists know that what Christians believe, they also get what the, why evangelism is important. I'll give you another example. Uh, who here knows a guy named Penn Gillette? I don't know what he is. A uh, illusionist? Talk show host? Game show host? I, he's a lot of things. The only time that I know him was when he posted the game show identity. I, was, no, I, I don't really know him from anywhere else. But this is what he said. This is on YouTube, too. You could go up and look Penn Gillette and Christian. This is what he said. How much do you have to hate somebody to not proselytize? How much do you have to hate somebody to believe that everlasting life is possible and not tell them that? Um, this, per this atheist, uh, even though he doesn't believe in God, he respects Christians who actually takes their faith seriously and actually uh, share to them because um, our understanding is that those who do not uh, believe in Jesus Christ as their personal Savior um, would not have everlasting life. So um, this is really interesting. Um, and there were also quotes from past Christian leaders that talked about how Christians really need to share the gospel. Um, some of these are pretty convicting. William Booth, who is the founder of Salvation Army, which, by the way, is a denomination, not an organization, um, said that, not called, did you say? Not heard the call, I think you should say. Put your ears down to, to the Bible and hear him bid you go and pull sinners out of the fire of sin. And then he actually went on about it, but it was such a long quote that um, I didn't even bother to put the rest of it. Uh, Charles Spurgeon, the Prince of Preachers, actually quoted this, Have you no wish for others to be saved? Then you are not saved yourself. Be sure of that. He has come to the point where he talks about, like, if you don't even have a heart for, a, for someone to be saved, uh, you're probably not saved. That's basically what he's saying. He actually had another quote that says, Every Christian is either a missionary or an imposter. That is what he is implying about... Um, about Christians. So, um, I'm going to go and talk about what are two motivations of evangelism, and you cannot have one or the other. You, you need to have both. One is that you have to love God and you love others. It's just that simple. And it goes back to um, the greatest commandment and the second greatest commandment. Um, and one specific thing that I thought of when talking about motivations of loving God is John 14, 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I know sometimes that can be hard because sometimes, um, actually I would say this, if we live in the United States, it will be hard. 
because we're, we live in an environment where um, 